Hi, good morning, and welcome to today's Products in Focus. And the common themes for today are pretty much everybody's talking about crude oil right now, where it's going to go next. Had a fantastic there, uh, fantastic run yesterday. We've actually got the Saudi Finance Minister at a very big oil conference today uh, over in the US, one of his first speeches in the US since 2014. And um, a, a lot of people kind of looking at crude as a proxy as to uh, the world global economic economy right now. A lot of question marks over the fracking industry in the US. How much has it been protected by the US banks? Has the Fed been working with the banks to try and support and protect the industry? And obviously Saudi Arabia have been trying to, well, they were quite open about the fact that they were kind of at war with the fracking industry. That's why they were keeping that, uh, keep pushing that price down to make it as competitive as possible. And um, obviously it's not kind of really worked out that well in that, in that regard. We're also seeing a potentially uh, interesting double bottom formation being fully active now on the uh, US 30. So when we look at it from a technical perspective, you'll see the, the fact that the market had come down, bounced, come down to a very similar level and it has pushed back up higher. And the US 30 is certainly looking in slightly better condition than it was just a few weeks ago. Um, but we'll have a look at that in just a quick second. Pound still getting absolutely hammered. It dropped about 2% yesterday as a talk of a Brit exit. Uh, still is very much talk of the town in London and across in Europe as well. The euro took a bit of a pummeling, the pound was down. Uh, I think the sterling was actually at its lowest level versus the US dollar since 2007. So it's um, been some quite significant moves that we've seen there in the market. But that's kind of the, just, the themes really haven't really kind of changed that much. It's a bit quieter today than it has been in, in other days, but from a technical perspective, there's still some very nice levels to look at. So without further ado, let's have a look at the US 30. So as ever, this is currently where we are on the US market and we managed to get a technical breakout uh, a little bit higher. Uh, it's not really followed through with too much conviction so far this morning, but uh, we are potentially capped by that uh, 55 period SMA. CMC clients are getting a little bit bearish now. They are now 81% uh, short. Uh, 16,460 could be the short term potential resistance where you can kind of see it's kind of spiked up multiple times but failed to break up higher. We did have this move for it broke above it, but then it didn't really follow through. But so far today, uh, so far yesterday, uh, we are still ticking above that level just now. So this could be an interesting springboard, depending if you think the market's going to go higher to target uh, 17,038, or if you think things are going to go, go lower. Once it trades below 16,460, you could be looking at a retracement back down towards this potential double bottom right here. But this would be a, a proper breakout where um, you've got this, this bottom here, you've got the potential neckline and it's broken up to the upside. So from a technical perspective, the US there, you just got a little bit more interesting. Then moving on to the UK 100 cash, uh, still potentially in the sloping downwards trend line. 71% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. Other technicals are relatively neutral. 60, 70 looks to be a short term potential resistance. And that's been in play for quite some time. If we go a little bit further back, that gives you an idea of where we are. And certainly the technicals it bounced right up to that level, stopped, then got pushed back down. So perhaps that's still the level to keep your eye on. Looking at the Japan 225, uh, Kuroda in Japan, the, um, their equivalent of the, of the chairman of the Bank of Japan, uh, is taking a little bit of heat in that part of the world. You can see that 16,384 looks to be short-term potential resistance. It's tried multiple times to break through there without much luck, but it is just, it's almost like a very steep uh, some, uh, ascending triangle formation where we're looking for a breakout above here to get to 16,896 as a potential resistance. Failing that, we could get a retracement back down to 14,671. Uh, it all depends about that yen. Let's have a look at the yen right now, in fact. So the yen still gaining uh, momentum at the moment. Uh, and what we're seeing is people are buying the yen, but not as the equity markets are getting pummeled. So it's not safe haven buying. People are buying the, the yen because of the deflationary pressures that are coming into, uh, in, into play in, uh, in Japan. And there's a lot of question marks over how the Japanese government are going to solve that issue. So it's kind of an unusual situation for the Japanese yen where uh, normally you would you'd be expecting people to, to kind of buy that up uh, as, as that safe haven, as where it's been traditionally seen, but uh, people are buying it for slightly different reasons right now. So uh, 111 spot 61 is a potential support level followed by um, 110 spot 0A. And 63% of CMC Marks clients are currently long. So moving on to crude oil, West Texas, as we mentioned, it had a particularly good day yesterday, but still failing to break above uh, with much conviction um, to break above 31.70 and change. It's still trading above $30, which is, which is significant in itself. Uh, I think we've kind of broken out of this potential sloping trend line as we speak. We need to get above that 55 period SMA. 35.13 is still the, uh, the potential support level to be aware of. 
We have to go quite far back, probably even onto the weekly charts to see that level in more detail. We are in the middle of two ranges right now. This is potential support, this is potential resistance. 55% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. So then moving on to gold, as ever gold's been quite volatile, is slowly forming what seems to be a symmetrical triangle formation. Let's just get our drawing tools out and see how that properly looks like. So that's the one level there. And I'll probably take the next point from being here to here. So that's currently what we're looking at. So symmetrical triangle formation is either going to break at this side or this side. Uh, one way or the other, we should be able to get a decent move once it does. 78% of CMC market clients are currently long. So they might be anticipating a break to the upside, in which case you might target up here as the next potential resistance. Feeling that, you'd be looking at uh, 1191 as being that next potential support. Finishing up with uh, the major currencies. So the euro got smashed yesterday, but not as badly smashed as the sterling, uh, breaking below one spot 11. So technical breakout. Uh, you could be looking at that 55 period S. Uh, is that sorry? Is that yeah? That 55 period SMA is the next potential support. You could be looking at the tips of these candles. So we're not that far away from potential support on uh, on euro dollar. Arguably, you could be looking at uh, one, maybe about one spot 10. No, well, we're pretty much there right now, to be honest, uh, as a short term potential support, the tips these candles might provide. Uh, and if we have a look at Pearl GBP USD, you can see a proper technical breakout lower yesterday. We still managed to close above one spot 41.29, which could be significant, but we're on the wrong side of that right now. Uh, it's looking a little bit weak. Obviously, concerns about a Brit exit and the impact on the economy and interest rates and everything else is having an effect on that. 63% of CMC market clients are currently short, so they're anticipating further downside. And when you look at the trend, the sterling has not been looking that strong for quite some time. Okay, so that gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect from a technical perspective. Let's just quickly finish up with the market calendar as always, and uh, just bring that into, into play. We've got business survey, uh, sentiment index in Germany, the CCI from uh, US existing home sales, more existing home sales and new crude oil inventory reporting on Wednesday. Thursday brings uh, CPI for Germany, GDP for the UK, that's gonna be important for, for cable, uh, more CPI from the Eurozone, durable goods, employment claims, and some Japanese data. And then on Friday, more CCI data from the Eurozone, from Germany, GDP from the US, and the Consumer Sentiment Survey, University of Michigan from uh, America, and then personal income to round up the week. Well, that's it from you guys. Very good luck with your trading, and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next. Thank you very much, and goodbye.